radio program. And what we do is we cover business life and everything in between. So we are here today with Jennifer Wakefield of the Greater Richmond Partnership. Welcome to the program. Thank you, Mike. All right, can you get a little closer? Sure, thank you, Mike. All righty. So uh, could you give us an idea of what exactly the Greater Richmond Partnership is? I know, because you guys do some really cool things. But let our listeners know exactly who you guys are and what you do. This is the elevator pitch. <laughs> Well, just very simply, we recruit companies to locate in Richmond. So we work, uh, we represent the city of Richmond and then the counties of Chesterfield, Hanover, and Henrico. Okay, so a lot of times, and we've talked about this before, so it's Mike King, Jennifer Wayne, your Great Richmond Partnership. We talk a lot of times for people who don't know, they think it's really a competition between the city and the counties. But you guys say a lot of times it's a collaborative effort. It, absolutely. That's why we were created. So the city and the three counties formed uh, a predecessor organization to GRP back in the 1970s. Uh, it was a fully public entity. Uh, and then in 1994, the private sector wanted to join in. And so they disbanded the previous organization and formed the Breeder Richmond Partnership, which is a public private entity. So we work for the four jurisdictions, as well as about 100 private sector investors to represent Richmond to companies who are based in these targeted industry clusters that we go after. Uh, targeted industries like you know, manufacturing, IT, a lot of data centers, uh, food and beverage, uh, biosciences, and more. So when, so one of my kids, Mike, Mike is here, Jennifer's here. So when I think of biotech, I think of the city of Richmond. For some reason, when I think of data, I think of my man, Anthony Romanello and Henrico. How do you guys determine what the targeted sectors are to go after? So we work with our local partners to determine what those sectors are. And um, so I would say that, yes, you're accurate. There is a strong sector for bio in the city, uh, but there is strong bio and life sciences throughout all four of the jurisdictions. And from a data center perspective, Henrico is fantastic. They've done a really great job. Um, but Chesterfield also is very strong in that area, uh, as well as Hanover and the city are growing. So when you guys are out, so I know the counties and those jur jurisdictions, they go out and recruit as well. Do you guys, how do you sort of come up with so that you guys are not crossing each other and out there across the water or in another area competing against each other? Yeah, so we do it in coordination. So when we're going to other markets, so for instance, today we had a meeting with each of our local partners uh, and we talked about where we're going for the remainder of this fiscal year. So we're on a July 1 fiscal, so we have a few months left before the end of the year. And so we we're planning out the mission trips that we're going to go on. And then they've shared information if they're going to go on trips that are going to be without us. Oftentimes that's going to be with the state in partnership with the state. Otherwise, typically we're traveling together to go call on companies. Oh, really? Yes. So if so, is it you guys as a whole, or is it the Greater Richmond Partnership and Henrico, or is it Chesterfield? Or you guys go as a, a whole entity? It's, it's as a whole. Typically, however, though, we don't take all four uh, partners with us at the same time. So typically it's two partners. So what happens is right now we're in the beginning stages of planning for fiscal 23. So we're beginning to think through where is it that we want to go for next year based on where the company is based, right? So obviously New York down through DC is the majority of the companies, but then we've also got a lot of international companies. There's some interest from the West Coast. So trying to identify exactly which markets, then we start to put a schedule together and then we ask each of our partners who's interested in which markets and then they tell us where they would like to go. Oh. And so typically it's two partners that we would travel with at a time. One of my kids, Mike, ESPN, Rick Sinatra, you find us 5 to 7 a.m. This is a business show. This is the top business radio program in the area. I'm here with Mike King. I'm here with Jennifer Wakefield. She runs the Greater Richmond Partnership. You are the recruiter for, in reality. We recruit companies here. Recruit yep, that's companies. what we do. Okay, so uh, a while back during the pandemic, we had a conversation and we were wondering whether from a racial standpoint that uh, Richmond, the RVA area, was good for minority businesses. I think the answer was kind of came out today that Richmond is good and accepting for minority businesses. Absolutely, absolutely. Can you talk about, you knew back then it was okay. Absolutely. Yes. You absolutely yeah. you knew. But, but we had some concerns from a few clients who had expressed to us uh, whether or not they and their families would be welcome to this market. And so what came out today about that Richmond is an open market, it's inclusive and it's understanding. There was a great article that appeared that Richmond Region Tourism had worked on to promote. 
uh, about this being a very welcoming environment, especially for black businesses. Uh, in addition, there are two articles that just were posted in Black Enterprise that we had worked on uh, to pitch forth uh, black success uh, in different markets. So shout out to uh, all the folks over at Tourism. And we talked about that Richmond, a lot of times shows up on a lot of different good lists. Mm -hmm nationally as well as internationally. Let's talk about what the draw is that you see that really makes Richmond a great place to do business. There's a lot of reasons uh, why companies would want to select our market to do business. Uh, first and foremost, we have a very strong and stable business environment. And that's attractive because what corporate executives really want is to minimize risk, right? And so we've got a stable business environment. We're very attractive to them, low taxes, right? Um, our location is a fantastic advantage. Yes, it is. We're two at what we're trying to position now is that when Andy Florence announced the CoStar expansion, he called it our little HQ2. And so what I can say is that just to our north, obviously, is Amazon's HQ2. And just to our south in Raleigh is Apple's HQ2. So we are a really great place for um, corporate and divisional headquarters. And so what I can tell you is that from a location standpoint, we're two hours to DC, two hours to Raleigh, two hours to the beach, and you know, an hour to the mountains. One of the things is, can you talk about from a business corporate culture, what makes the Richmond area so good for not so much only just to recruit businesses, but the business environment here? You have your hands you know, on a lot of different sectors. You talk to a lot of different people. What's in the magic for the city of Richmond, the counties, and, and Central Virginia? What's in the magic here, I think, is really the people. Uh, and that's one of the other things that is one of our strongest assets is the people that are based here, the workforce that is here, the diversity of the people that are based here. Um, we are a much more diverse environment uh, and market. Uh, our percentage of non-white is uh, a lot higher than the U.S. average. And that's attractive to companies, especially now as they are looking at things through a DEI lens and as they're looking to hire diverse talent. Uh, and so I say people, people, and people, that is the first thing that companies look for is, do you have the talent now? Will you have the talent in the future? On the mic with Mike, ESPN Richmond, that's where we are. We are coming to you from Gathering Hem here at the Hilton. Mike King is here with Jennifer Wakefield of the Greater Richmond Partnership. Let me ask you, so uh, we had Bridget Bywater who was here from Kings Dominion. I asked her, what was the thing about that she saw that was different that she noticed about the Richmond community. She said that the collaboration between business community and businesses as a whole, it's not cutthroat. People are out there trying to make a difference. Absolutely, I would agree with that. What do you, what do you think that that is? Is it in, what's in the DNA here that makes that happen and attractive? Uh, I would say really it's, you know, we're not too large, not too small, we're kind of just right. We've got that Goldilocks kind of syndrome. And so people are very welcoming. Um, you know, when you locate to this market uh, and willing to lend a hand and uh, businesses are willing to, you know, work with one another versus, you know, just compete with one another. On the mic with Mike, Jennifer Wakefield, how can people find a greater Richmond partnership out there? Uh, they can go to grpba.com. Okay, so uh, on the mic with Mike, what we do here is, you know, people come here, we break news here. You got anything that you'd like to let us? I ask Anthony <laughs> Romanello all the time. I ask Dr. Casey, if you guys have anything you want to break news here, uh, that's what we do. Anything new and exciting that, uh, you know, the Greater Richmond Partnership would want to let our listeners know about? Uh, not anything that I am allowed to talk oh, about at oh, this moment. You know, um, as a journalist, well, I'm not really a journalist. <laughs> I'm just playing one here. But that's what we always ask. And you always get the same answer, knowing that the person's going to say no. <laughs> but you're kind of like required to ask. I would say stay tuned. There will be at least three announcements very, very soon. That's what you call a media tease, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> that one is, you know, stay tuned. You know, that's something good is, is on its way. So uh, you come through and we talked when we met before as far as the pandemic went. What did you learn as an executive coming out of covid that you didn't think would have worked before, but all of a sudden you're realizing that's pretty good. We can incorporate that now and go forward with it. Uh, one of the things I think for us is that typically when we were calling on companies, we were deciding which markets we were going to go to based on where the companies were located. Um, and so we would go to those markets and try and meet with those companies for the first time. Uh, however, through the pandemic, obviously, we couldn't go to those markets and meet with companies in person. And so we started doing virtual calls. 
right, as the first step. And that's really kind of honestly where we should have been uh, in the beginning is having a phone call or having a virtual call with a company before we're hopping on a plane to go visit with them. But you, like everyone else in the world, figured we got to be there pressing the flesh. We have to be there in person. Well, there, there's nothing like in person. There's nothing right? like I mean, we've that's met what, before virtually, but, but not, we That's why we're here. Have you here right now. Yeah. We asked, I interviewed uh, the CEO of Elephant Insurance, and I said to him, what did you learn during the pandemic? He said he never would have thought in a lifetime that virtual working would work. He said it won't work. Two months into it, you know what he's saying? This thing is working. And he was shocked because I think we as, as everyone is kind of shocked that that, that that happens. What are some of the things that people would think about that know about the Richmond business community that they would be shocked about? From, the, mm. from, from your perspective. Okay, so what are things that people ask you when you initially talk to them about Richmond? Is it, which Richmond is it? Uh, no, first it's Richmond. That's what my wife said. Richmond? When you, I, I don't know anything about Richmond. So we've done some perception research over the last few years. We did some in 2018 and then last year in 2021. And what we found is that corporate executives really don't know very much about Richmond. Let's hope that, you know, back in the day, they learned it in their geography class that it's the capital of Virginia, right? But there are 90 different Richmonds. I didn't know until Jack, I knew there were a number. I didn't know that there was a big number like that of Richmonds around the country. Correct. Yeah, or around the world. So. so how do you, okay, so now how do we separate ourselves from Richmond, Virginia to Richmond, California? Well, like, part of it is we need to say Richmond, Virginia. <laughs> that is right? the whole thing. <laughs> and the whole thing Same. needs to be said to the people. Saying Richmond, know. Virginia. So when we're writing uh, and we're talking about the region, we say in the Richmond, Virginia region. When you talk from your perspective, is it so it's you and the counties? Mm -hmm. And the city, yeah. And the city. What happens when people come to you and they want to talk about Central Virginia as a whole? Do you, what do you guys do at that point? What do you mean, Central Virginia? So, you know, like, okay, so they start asking you about other areas, like how far your jurisdiction expands out, how far it goes out. If a person wants to know about, say, Brunswick or or something a little further out, because those guys are competing against you as well. They, they, no, that would be competition. That's competition. Right? So we only represent the four. So the city, Chesterfield, Hanover, and Rhineville. If it's outside of our area, we'll say we're very close to that region. And you know you should locate in greater Richmond and you'd have access to that market. Uh, but I want to win. So I don't want them to locate in those other regions. But if there are good things that are nearby, like say University of Virginia, I'm going to claim it and say it's less than It's close by. <laughs> yeah, it is close, yeah. you know. It's close where relative closeness is relative. Absolutely. So on the mic with Mike, this is part of the ESPN, uh, we're part of ESPN network. It is Mike English Radio, which is ESPN Richmond 5 to 7 a.m. Uh, the Choice 105.3, as well as International Business Growth Radio. We're talking about how business can help transform society. That's what we do. We're a social enterprise business show. I'd like to thank our show sponsors, Tom Children, the credit card guy, Andy Taylor and Junk Luggers. So Andy Taylor and Junk Luggers, is, they're a good company. And what they do is they help you remove things around the household, bikes, hot tubs, you know, uh, anything from an, one item to an entire household. But don't call Andy Taylor, the owner of Junk Luggers, if you need people removed around your household. <laughs> he cannot help you. Do not call Andy Taylor. He is the sheriff. That's for people who are old enough to remember the sheriff, and you don't. I don't. I'm sorry. Uh, on uh, Mayberry, or uh, 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 oh, okay. Andy yeah, Taylor. Yeah, yeah. yeah uh -huh. okay. So Andy Taylor to sheriff. Don't call him about you need people to remove from your household. Stop giving out gas money, stop cooking, and maybe change the internet password. Because other than that, they can handle everything. They're eco-friendly, plus they support the community, which is why I rock with them. We have Jennifer Wakefield. She was she is with the Greater Richmond Partnership. Do you want to shout out some of your folks? Hey, we gotta give a shout out to Mitchell Kane to uh a couple of events that we had and talked about. He was out there talking about the greatness of the community. I looked up Mitchell Allen. Yes. Okay. Sorry. I'm like, I saw him overseas, and then he says, "Oh, on the way back, I stopped in Paris." Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you know, I okay. That's something. So the world has opened back up to you guys. Uh, yes and no. So uh, there are still events that are being canceled sometimes. So some of the trade shows and stuff keeping pushed. So um, success, typically our market has found very good success in international companies locating their first 
US office in the Richmond market. And we've been very successful in that over the years. Um, throughout the pandemic, that has decreased somewhat. Uh, the state is telling us that that's picking up at least at the state level. And so we're trying to leverage that as well. Uh, but there are particular markets that we do exceptionally well in. So the UK, Germany, France. One of the great things, so if Mike King, Jennifer is here with us, one of the great things that we, we talk about is a, you know, from a sales perspective is a sales cycle, you're as a recruiter. What does, successful, what does a successful visit look like? And what's the timeline? What happens to go from, hi, we're Richmond, Virginia, you don't know anything about us to somebody making an announcement saying, hey, look, what, look who's coming to town. So there used to be a typical timeline, right? Not and anymore. It, there is no typical COVID, timeline. COVID, COVID did away. COVID destroyed that. So <laughs> typically a project would be somewhere between 12 and 18 months. Okay, that's not, so, I, yeah, I that's thought it would be go. longer. Uh, sometimes, right? If they're on a longer lead cycle, right? So we're working with a client right now. There's definitely a project. There's interest in Richmond, Virginia. Uh, but, you know, they've got two other expansions that are happening first. So it's probably a three year down the road. So that's considered a lead for us, right? But typically it would be a year to a year and a half would be a project, right? Um, now we've had some in as few as six weeks. Six weeks? That are wanting to make some kind of an announcement, yeah. So the timelines are um, so compressed, it's, it's not funny. So we'll get a call from a company uh, and oftentimes at that point, we've already been shortlisted, right? So there's much more what's called desktop research going on on okay. computers, right? So by the time, oftentimes we would hear from a consultant who worked on a half, about half of all economic development projects, we we're already shortlisted. Well, it used to be that back in the day, we were shortlisted among three to five communities. Right now it's us in one other community and all things are basically equal. So they want to come and see the site and meet with people and talk about what the work, again, people, right? They want to talk about what the workforce is like, what opportunities there are for engagement and um, partnership with higher education institutions. Uh, and then they go back and make their decision. So uh, it can be very, very quick. Now. And so there's not a set time. And you know, it's funny when we look at it that way, I would think that the, the sales process and in reality, I guess the recruitment process is a lot longer, but from a sales perspective, COVID has really cut down the time frame for a lot of things, travel, international, you know, international travel. We can do things immediately now by Zoom and it's an accepted way of doing business. Before I've had Zoom interviews and there's a crash or this person, you know, freezes up and says, hey, Mike froze up. No problem. He'll be back. Whereas three or four years ago, we would have thought that was catastrophic. We would have because that's not how you do good business. But now it's understandable that to recruit people, to make sales, to do things of that nature, you know, the electronic version, the virtual version works. Mm -hmm. It does. Alrighty, so how can people find the Greater Richmond Partnership out there one last time? They can visit grpva.com. So uh, I want to mic with Mike, so I'm going to hold you to, so when you're making the, the big announcement with all, see, we got a bank of microphones, well, not a bank of microphones, we have a couple of microphones. So when you guys are ready to make the big announcement, you guys are going to break that on, on the mic with Mike? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oftentimes, if there's incentives involved, uh, the governor typically would make that announcement. <clears throat> okay, so I got to work on that. Can't, can't trump the governor. No, no, no. We got to work on having the governor. You know, we got to work on having the governor here because I'll get a couple more microphones. I got some microphones laying right over there. <laughs> so we've just talked to uh, Governor Youngkin about coming here. We've talked to a number of people. We talked to the mayor. We talked to Abigail Spamberger. We've talked to, you know, uh, a number of people. But the governor is on our list. We'd like to thank you for coming in. You know, you're part of the family. Uh, you understand how this works. When you guys have something to let us know, just let us, you know, just let us know. We'll always find a time for you guys. And uh, please tell your, your people we said thanks for their time. Okay. All righty. On the mic, it's Mike, the best business radio program around. Uh, as I always say, the microphone ain't free plus my grandkids need stuff. So we got to pay for this with some advertisements. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks now. Take care.